So for years, my wife and I have been building our house, which has been taking a ton of our time. And because of that, I haven't been posting nearly as many videos as I would like. And then in the last year, we decided we would build ourselves a new barn. So now we've done that. Well, I decided, well, what a better time to actually stop working so hard and actually have some fun. So with that being said, I picked up a nice four-wheeler, but it needed some serious work. So let's go over it and I'll show you what I've done. So before I go into a lengthy video on this uh, four-wheeler, I just thought I would take a minute and explain. I've had this video shot for well over a month now. I had everything in place. I shot all sequences of step-by-step -step on how I fixed this four-wheeler and got it back working again. And I'm not going to go on a long rant and sort of swear, even though I would absolutely love to. But I was just about finished the video and my brand new camera decided it would throw me a card error. And in doing so, it formatted the entire card and wiped all of my videos right off the card. Thankfully, I only had this video. I didn't have any travel documents or anything in there, which was great. But needless to say, that is something that should never have happened. That is something that I don't understand why the camera would even have this option in it. So I've spent the last better part of a month trying multiple, multiple different formats to recapture those videos to see if there's any way that they were still salvageable in the back of that card. I can't find them anywhere. I'm now shooting this with a different card. I'm not using that card anymore. I don't know what happened, but let's just say very frustrating. I've lost a month of work very disappointing but with that being said let's move on and i'll show you what i've done on this here machine so today we're going to do a full recap because everything is back together everything is working but i'll show you exactly what i've done to get it to that point so let's pull this thing into the shade because it's a scorcher out here today and i don't want to sit in the sun all day and talk to you folks so let's go So here we are in the shade. This is much easier to talk, much nicer, much cooler. So the machine we have here is a 2001 Polaris 400 Sportsman. So a little bit older of a model, but still very functional. It's gonna be perfect for what I'm gonna be using it here for on Willow Tree Farm. So it's gonna be great for pulling out our logs and getting us everything we need to do around our property. So the first thing, when I got this machine, it wasn't running. So no spark, nothing was happening. So it turns out underneath this cover right here is the stator. So the stator was blown and because of that, it wasn't generating any spark. Turns out the cover itself had some cracks in it. It let moisture in, which ended up shorting out the stator. So the first thing we did was went ahead and we bought a new stator. I'll be putting all of the um, links to the parts that I purchased for this unit in the description. So if you have a similar machine and you need those parts, then absolutely check out my links. So once we got the stator, the cover itself, of course, being cracked, we had to buy a new cover. So we got a new cover and then of course we decided at that time we'd replace the entire gasket around the perimeter of that just to keep all moisture out. When we also got it, the bolts that were on the side of the stator cover here, the recoil cover, they were half missing. So I ended up at a Polaris dealership, ended up getting the bolts. They were the best price. Um, so I got a whole bunch of new uh, bolts to go around the stator cover. So bolt the dot all on, everything works just great. So here's a shot of the original stator and recoil cover. As you can see, nice hole right through it. Some cracked pieces at the very top. So that was letting in moisture 
quite badly. And when you look on the inside, quite sort of mangled and beat up. Turns out what had happened, I think for the most part, is the cog here that um, engages the starter pull cord, as you can see, had come off and was rattling around in there, just smashing everything to bits. So that wasn't a very nice thing to find when you open up things and that dropped out. I was like, well, that could be the root of a big part of the problem. So the next piece that had some issues was the heat shield here on the muffler. So the heat shield itself was broken, it wasn't there. So we ended up fashioning out a new one out of steel. We've put it on here to act as a protection now so you're not gonna melt or destroy your shoes or your footwear. So on the side of the machine here, we have a, you could call it almost an emergency brake. When you pull the brakes on the handlebars, it gives you the front axle brakes and the rear axle brakes. This pedal here just actuates the rear pedal brakes. The uh, control cylinder that operates this foot pedal is non-functioning, so we've gone ahead, we've ordered a new one of those. We've installed that and new pads for the disc brakes the whole way around the machine. So now we have full functioning brakes and we also have our rear brake here, which just breaks a rear axle. So we've got our emergency brake. The next thing we had to do was up in the front end. So go, let's go look at that. So the next thing we had to look at here was the grill. So the grill itself was caved in pretty badly. Someone had obviously hit something pretty rough. It was caved in and almost to the point of hitting the rad. So the rad itself was in a bit of a rough shape. It was very dirty. We ended up cleaning it right out, cleaning all the fins, flushing the rad, and getting it back functioning. And then we ended up rebending the entire grill here on the front back to straight. The side covers for the rad are just plastic and they were badly broken. So we ended up getting some similar plastic off of another piece of equipment. We ended up cutting it and epoxying the wings on the side of the rad cover. And now it's fully encased, it's nice and sealed and happy again. So you'll notice here that our winch is missing. So it turns out the solenoid that drives the winch, I thought it was suspect. So I ended up taking it out. I took the entire system out. I've tested the solenoid. The solenoid does function perfectly. So I'm thinking what happened was the wiring to the solenoid was not correct. I've now traced it, it's now functioning. So all I have to do now is put everything back together and I will have my fully functioning winch back again for pulling out logs here on the farm. So the next part I wanted to mention was the CDI. So the CDI is the capacitor discharge ignition. That is what sort of uh, works with your stator in order to get you your spark. So it was located behind the grill right in front of the rad. So when I re-straightened and fixed the grill, fixed the rad, the CDI, the way it was mounted, I'm not sure why Polaris ever decided to mount it right up there under the front, but it was sort of hitting the rad. It would have caused damage in the long run. So I ended up soldering on some new connections, rewiring it, and now it's mounted right here, right behind the center cowling, high up, out of the water, out of any moisture, and it's nice and protected right here under this front cover. So that's a nice sort of relocation that uh, if you're looking to fix something in your front end, that would be the time to relocate that CDI and get it up into safe.
So other than all the little necessary sort of TLCs, just sort of straightening things out and uh, getting the stator back functioning, sort of getting all the little pieces back working, the only other thing I've had to do on this machine is really just check all the fluids just to be on the safe side. So top up the oil uh, or do an actual oil change on it, uh, top up the rad, top, make sure the axle fluid is good, transmission fluid is good. So outside of that, everything now on this machine is running. Um, yeah, it's really nice to have. My wife seems very attached to it now, so if I can just get it back from her, I think we'll be in good shape. So, it's unfortunate that I couldn't show you videos of everything that was sort of happening along the step-by-step -step process. Really frustrating to have that happen, but I've learned now that I only shoot a couple of videos and then I go basically download all my footage because I'm never gonna get caught in a situation like that again. So, moving forward, um, I might be able to have uh, a couple little pictures of maybe some of the all the pieces that I had laid out. I may have just a small little sectional video that I took on my phone. So any of those little pieces, if I have them, I'll stick them through at the end of the video. Hopefully it'll all come together and you enjoy. So don't forget, like, subscribe. Go on my website, uh, bigwoodsman.com. There's a subscription area there. Every time I post a video, you'll get notification. So remember, it's life out there in the woods. I'll see you out there in it. Well, here goes nothing.